Frank Lloyd Wright was an American architect and writer who is widely regarded as one of the most creative and influential architects of the 20th century one. He was born on June 8, 1867, in Richland Center, Wisconsin, and died on April 9, 1959, in Phoenix, Arizona. Wright's architectural style was characterized by his use of organic architecture, which emphasized the integration of buildings with their natural surroundings. His prairie style became the basis of 20th-century residential design in the United States. Wright's mother, Anna Lloyd-Jones, was a schoolteacher, and his father, William C. Wright, was an itinerant musician and preacher. Wright attended the University of Wisconsin at Madison for a few terms in 1885-86 as a special student, but as there was no instruction in architecture, he took engineering courses. In order to supplement the family income, Wright worked for the Dean of Engineering, but he did not like his situation nor the commonplace architecture around him. He dreamed of Chicago, where great buildings of unprecedented structural ingenuity were rising. Wright's early work was heavily influenced by his mentor, Louis Sullivan, who was a prominent architect in Chicago. Wright worked for Sullivan's firm, Adler and Sullivan, for several years before starting his own practice. Wright's early work was characterized by his use of geometric shapes and ornamentation, which he later abandoned in favor of a more organic style. Wright's most famous works include Falling Water, the Guggenheim Museum, the Roby House, Taliesin, and Taliesin West. Here are some of his most famous quotes. The truth is more important than the facts. A building is not just a place to be but a way to be. Space is the breath of art. Nature is all the body of God we mortals will ever see. Freedom is from within. The best friend of earth of men is the tree. Dining is and always was a great artistic opportunity. We boast the highest standard of living when it's only the biggest. Study nature, love nature, stay close to nature. It will never fail you. We should learn from the snail, it has devised a home that is both exquisite and functional. I know the price of success, dedication, hard work, and an unremitting devotion to the things you want to see happen. I go to nature every day for inspiration in the day's work. Imitate nothing except principle. Space. The continual becoming, invisible fountain from which all rhythms flow and to which they must pass. Beyond time or infinity. The only thing wrong with architecture is architects. An expert is a man who has stopped thinking. Why should he think? He is an expert. Regard it as just as desirable to build a chicken house as to build a cathedral. The thing always happens that you really believe in, and the belief in a thing makes it happen. Youth is not an age thing. It's a quality. Once you've had it, you never lose it. Bring out the nature of the materials. Let their nature intimately into your scheme. Many wealthy people are little more than janitors of their possessions. There is nothing more uncommon than common sense. The measure of a man's culture is the measure of his appreciation. We are ourselves what we appreciate and no more. It's easier to make changes with a pencil than a wrecking bar. If you foolishly ignore beauty, then you will soon find yourself without it. The best thing to do is go as far out as you can get, what you regard as too far, and when others follow, as they will, move on. No house should ever be on any hill. It should be of the hill. Every great architect is, necessarily, a great poet. No stream rises higher than its source. The present is the ever-moving shadow that divides yesterday from tomorrow. In that lies hope. You can't make an architect. But you can open the doors and windows toward the light as you see it. All fine architectural values are human values, else not valuable. The good building is not one that hurts the landscape, but one which makes the landscape more beautiful than it was before the building was built. Form follows function that has been misunderstood. Form and function should be one, joined in a spiritual union. We create our buildings and then they create us. Likewise, we construct our circle of friends and our communities and then they construct us. A building should appear to grow easily from its site and be shaped to harmonize with its surroundings if nature is manifest there. You have to go wholeheartedly into anything in order to achieve anything worth having. 
No house should ever be on a hill or on anything. It should be of the hill. Belonging to it. Hill and house should live together each the happier for the other. Less is only more where more is no good. Art is a discovery and development of elementary principles of nature into beautiful forms suitable for human use. You can use an eraser on the drafting table or a sledgehammer on the construction site. Good taste is not a substitute for knowledge. Wood is universally beautiful to men. It is the most humanly intimate of all materials. The mother art is architecture. Without an architecture of our own we have no soul of our own civilization. An idea is salvation by imagination. Love is the virtue of the heart, sincerity is the virtue of the mind, decision is the virtue of the will, courage is the virtue of the spirit. Nature is the inspiration for all ornamentation. I never design a building before I've seen the site and met the people who will be using it. I believe in God, only I spell it nature. Simplicity and repose are qualities that measure the true value of any work of art. Each material has its own message. Organic architecture seeks superior sense of use and a finer sense of comfort, expressed in organic simplicity. Early in life, I had to choose between honest arrogance and hypocritical humility. I chose honest arrogance and have seen no occasion to change. More and more, so it seems to me, light is the beautifier of the building. If you wisely invest in beauty, it will remain with you all the days of your life. The best friend on earth of men is the tree, when we use the tree respectfully and economically, we have one of the greatest resources of the earth. If it sells, it's art. Every great architect is, necessarily, a great poet. He must be a great original interpreter of his time, his day, his age. Architecture is the triumph of human imagination over materials, methods, and men, to put men into possession of his own earth. A professional is one who does his best work when he feels the least like working. Youth is a circumstance you can't do anything about. The trick is to grow up without getting old. The human race built most nobly when limitations were greatest. I attend the greatest of all churches. I put a capital N on nature, and call it my church. The space within becomes the reality of the building. A great architect is not made by way of a brain nearly so much as he is made by way of a cultivated, enriched heart. The architect should strive continually to simplify, the ensemble of the rooms should then be carefully considered that comfort and utility may go hand in hand with beauty. The architect must be a prophet, a prophet in the true sense of the term, if he can't see at least ten years ahead don't call him an architect. I prefer honest arrogance to hypocritical modesty. Architecture is essentially human, it is the human spirit manifesting itself. For when a man builds, there, you've got him, you know exactly what, who, and how that man is. Give me the luxuries of life and I will willingly do without the necessities. I don't know whether you are a saint or a fool, said my lawyer. I replied, is there a difference? To know what to leave out and what to put in, just where and just how, ah, uh, that is to have been educated in knowledge of simplicity. Organic buildings are the strength and lightness of the spider spinning, buildings qualified by light, bred by native character to environment, married to the ground. I hate intellectuals. They are from the top down. I am from the bottom up. Think in simples as my old master used to say, meaning to reduce the whole to its parts in simplest terms, getting back to first principles. A man is a fool if he drinks before he reaches the age of fifty, and a fool if he doesn't afterward. All the more I study nature do I revere God, because nature is all the body of God we will ever know. I doubt if there is anything in the world uglier than a Midwestern city. Television is bubblegum for the mind. If it keeps up, men will atrophy all his limbs but the push-button finger. The ultimate creative thinking technique is to think like God. If you're an atheist, pretend how God would do it. Why, I just shake the buildings out of my sleeves. I know we can't have a great architecture while it is only for the landlord. Life always rides in strength to victory, not through internationalism, but only through the direct responsibility of the individual. 
An architect's most useful tools are an eraser at the drafting board and a wrecking bar at the site. Harvard takes perfectly good plums as students and turns them into prunes. Nature is my manifestation of God. I go to nature every day for inspiration in the day's work. I follow in building the principles which nature has used in its domain. The tall modern office building is the machine pure and simple, the engine, the motor, and the battleship the works of the century. Get the habit of analysis, analysis will in time enable synthesis to become your habit of mind. Humanity to me is not a mob. A mob is a degeneration of humanity. A mob is humanity going the wrong way. I'll bridge these hills with graceful arches. TV is chewing gum for the eyes. Less is more only when more is too much. Noble life demands a noble architecture for noble uses of noble men. Lack of culture means what it has always meant, ignoble civilization and therefore imminent downfall. Love is the greatest virtue of the heart. Imitation is always insult not flattery. Nature is the only body of God that we shall ever see. Toleration and liberty are the foundations of a great republic. The physician can bury his mistakes, but the architect can only advise his clients to plant vines. The outcome of the city will depend on the race between the automobile and the elevator, and anyone who bets on the elevator is crazy. Youth is a quality, not a matter of circumstances. Nature is never other than serene even in a thunderstorm. The room within is the great fact about the building. When I see architecture that moves me, I hear music in my inner ear. One war only breeds another. To look at the cross-section of any plan of a big city is to look at something like the section of a fibrous tumor. The physician can bury his mistakes, but the architect can only advise his client to plant vines, so they should go as far as possible from home to build their first buildings. Architecture is the frame of human existence. We must dedicate this existence more to beauty. For if poetic principle has deserted us, how long are we going to last? Very simple ideas lie within the reach only of complex minds. Remy de Gourmand an idea is salvation by imagination. Tip the world over on its side and everything loose will land in Los Angeles. Human beings can be beautiful. If they are not beautiful it is entirely their own fault. It is what they do to themselves that makes them ugly. Love of an idea is the love of God. We do not learn so much by our successes as we learn by failures, our own and others. Especially if we see the failures properly corrected. Buildings, too, are children of earth and Sunday. Doctors bury their mistakes, architects cover them with ivy. I find that government can be a kind of gangsterism and is in Russia. And is likely to be in America if we don't take care of ourselves pretty carefully. To me, young has no meaning. It's something you can do nothing about, nothing at all. But youth is a quality. And if you have it, you never lose it. Bureaucrats, they are dead at 30 and buried at 60. They are like custard pies, you can't nail them to a wall. A box is more a coffin for the human spirit than an inspiration. The heart is the chief feature of a functioning mind. Mechanization best serves mediocrity. From time to time the continent shifts, and everything that isn't fastened down slides into Southern California. So here I stand before you preaching organic architecture, declaring organic architecture to be the modern ideal. A man with a machine may murder or enslave millions, whereas it used to take at least thousands to murder millions. And the man behind the machine has nothing on his conscience. Architecture is Mont's great sense of himself embodied in a world of his own making. It may rise as high in quality only as its source because great art is great life. Man is a phase of nature, and only as he is related to nature does he matter, does he have any account whatever above the dust. I don't build a house without predicting the end of the present social order. I'm against war. Always have been, always will be. And everything connected with it, is anathema to me. I have never considered it necessary. Well, now that he's finished one building, he'll go write four books about it. I wouldn't mind seeing opera die. 
Ever since I was a boy, I regarded opera as a ponderous anachronism, almost the equivalent of smoking. Respect the masterpiece. It is true reverence to men. There is no quality so great, none so much needed now. I think Miss Monroe as architecture is extremely good architecture, and she's a very natural actress, and a very good one. Take nothing for granted as beautiful or ugly. I follow in building the principles which nature has used in its domain. It is where life is fundamental and free that men develop the vision needed to reveal the human soul in the blossoms it puts forth. They turned the country up on its side, and everything loose fell into California. Individuality realized is the supreme attainment of the human soul, the master master's work of art. Individuality is sacred. If you tilt the whole country sideways, Los Angeles is the place where everything loose will fall. I believe totally in a capitalist system, I only wish that someone would try it. I voted for Stevenson as opposed to Eisenhower because I thought he would make a good president, but against my conscience because I thought that he was too good for the job. I have been black and blue in some spot, somewhere, almost all my life from two intimate contacts with my own furniture. When anyone becomes an authority, that is the end of him as far as development is concerned. San Francisco is the only city I can think of that can survive all the things you people are doing to it and still look beautiful. Art for art's sake is a philosophy of the well-fed. Early in my career, I had to choose between an honest arrogance and a hypercritical humility. I deliberately choose an honest arrogance, and I've never been sorry. I do not believe in adding enrichment merely for the sake of enrichment. Unless it adds clearness to the enunciation of the theme, it is undesirable, for it is very little understood. Maybe we can show government how to operate better as a result of better architecture. The insolence of authority is endeavoring to substitute money for ideas. New York, prison towers and modern posters for soap and whiskey. Pittsburgh, abandon it. The Lincoln Memorial is related to the toga and the civilization that wore it. Money shows, men, new ways to cheat life. Power becomes exterior instead of interior. In these circumstances architecture becomes too difficult, building too easy. Why should architecture or objects of art in the machine age, just because they are made by machines, have to resemble machinery? Wherever human life is concerned, the unnatural structure of excessive verticality cannot stand against more natural horizontality. Consider everything in the nature of a hanging fixture a weakness, and naked radiators an abomination. Taste is a matter of ignorance. If you know what you are tasting, you don't have to taste. If you're going to have centralization, why not have it? If the paintings are too large, cut them in half. It is a terrific thing to get a building built that has the qualities of greatness in it. The two most important tools an architect has are the eraser in the drawing room and the sledgehammer on the construction site. Self-fulfilling prophecies do exist in real life. 